that's my clothes, that's my house, that's my car, that's my shoe, that's my money. You owe me. And we'll walk in looking like thieves, dressed up. Alarms all on the house, dead boats on doors, and we are stealing from God. Keeping folk out of our stuff and we're all in God's stuff. He says, but, but this is what I need you to do. I need you to just, just try me and see what I'll do. See, a lot of people, you know, I, I've asked me, do you give, you know, you consistently, do you, you pay uh, your, your offering and your tithe and, and you give consistently to God? Well, I'm praying about it. How, how? It's not about prayer. It's about being obedient. I mean, praying about doing what the word says. It's just something that we ought to inherently do when we are changed. Since I've been changed, I ought not want to steal from God. I, I would be ashamed to come in knowing that I am a thief. <laughs> it's quiet. I knew it was going to happen like this, but since I'm here, I might as well just, it's in the text, so I might as well just say it since it's in the text. You, you, you all, we ought not feel comfortable. Being thieves. Now, I mean, I don't think anybody, I don't guess anybody in here is like that, but some people in some places would, would do that. Well, let's let me get, get through this. You have to, you have to relinquish, link, relinquish trusting yourself. And, and when it comes to giving to God, it's, it's about trusting that God is going to do what he says that he will do. Now, watch this. Doing what verses 10, verse 10 says is not hard when you believe verse number 6. When you believe that God does not change, in fact, when you believe verse number 2 of chapter 1, you have no problem doing what it says in chapter 3, verse number 10. First of all, if I believe God loves me, if I believe that God truly loves me, I have no problem doing whatever it is that God says that I am supposed to do. And then if I believe that God loves me and then he turns around and say, I never change. That simply says, I don't care what happened. I'm always going to do what I said that I am going to do. Well, I don't understand. The economy is down. I am always going to do what I said I was going to do. When my stocks have crashed, I am always always going to do what I said I was going to do. Well, I've lost my job. I'm always going to do what I said I was going to do. My house is in foreclosure. I'm always, I'm going to always do what I said I was going to do. I promise to love you. I promise never to change. And if I said I was going to love you, in spite of your ups and your downs, I'm going to be the one that's right there with you. When everybody else turns and walk away, I am the one who promised to never leave you nor forsake you. He says, that's the God that I am, so you've got to trust me. We have a trust problem with God. We don't trust God enough. We don't trust God enough. We trust everything else. Got in the car this morning, put the key in the ignition, turned the ignition, just trusting that it was going to turn on. Nobody opened their hood, looked under the hood to see if everything was connected. We trusted everything was in proper working condition. We hopped in church, showed up, sit down on the pew. No one looked up under the pew to see if the pew was going to hold you. No one pushed on the pew, tested the pew. We just sat down on the pew because we trusted the pew. But when it showed up to trust in God, we start having to go through our mind questioning whether God is going to do what he says that he will do. Well, God said, I don't need you to do that. I need you to trust me. Then he says, when you learn to trust me, he says, you can then rejoice. Watch, watch, watch the C portion of verse number 10. It says, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven 
and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Let, let, me, just, let me just stop right there. He, well, you understand the context. Because they've been robbing God, God has had to withhold from them some blessings that would have made some things change for them. Since they've been robbing God, God has had to hold back some stuff that they would need to help their crops to grow. He is simply saying, now, if you trust me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven and I'm going to pour you out a blessing that you will not have enough room to receive. He is, when he talks about pouring out, he said, I'm going to empty out blessings in your life. And I don't know about you, but I thank God that he's the kind of God that knows how to empty out blessing. I mean, you, you ever heard the song, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. I am a true testimony that I've tried with all of my might to outgive him. I've tried to give the stuff I didn't have to him to see if I could bankrupt him. But every time I turned around, he showed up with another bucket of blessing. I said, I got him this time. I'm going to bankrupt him this time. I'm going to give beyond what he can give to me. But when I showed up again, I was stumbling over blessing that he had poured out in my life. When I turned and went one way, I showed back up blessing were waiting on me he says now if you trust me I'm able to pour you out blessings he says not only not only am I going to pour you out blessings but watch this he says then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground nor will your vine in the field cast his grape says the lord of hosts says what i'm going to do is all of those pests that's going to try to eat up your crops i'm going to stop that from happening he says if you trust me and if you do what's right by me everything that's trying to take from you i'm going to block that from happening understand this agrarian language he's he's speaking to these folk who understood agriculture and they understood that if the bugs showed up the bugs would eat up their crops and then they would have nothing to even give to god nor would they have anything for themselves but god says if you trust me not only am i going to bless you but i'm going to block what's going to hinder your blessing he he says, I'm going to bless you beyond measure, but everything that's trying to eat up the blessing that I give to you, I'm going to rebuke them. Well, let me just bring it closer to you. Let, let me just make it a real a reality for us in contemporary society. He says, if you trust me enough, everything that's trying to hinder you from going forward, I'm able to rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's simply saying, I'm going to keep your car running when you thought you were going to have to put that alternator on. You've been tapping on that alternator trying to get that car to start. He said, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it intact a little while longer until you get your next paycheck so that you can take care of it. He said, I know you're riding on those tires and you need some new tires, but I'm not going to let you have a blowout. I'm going to keep you rolling on those tires until you get a little more income so that you can be blessed to put your new set on. He said, I know how to rebuke the devourer for your sake. He said that when I do that for you, then everybody else will look at you and say, you are a delight some lamb. Is there anybody here know that he knows how to give you a reason to rejoice? And I am a living testimony that if you give to God, he'll give back to you. If you hand over to God what belongs to him, God knows how to bless your life. Is there anybody here? Know that God will, he'll bless your life. Is there anybody here? Know that God will hold back some stuff to keep the enemy from slipping in on you. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Know that God will. He'll bless your life. But you've got to trust him enough and give him a chance because he's a faithful God. And I don't understand how we can be so God-fearing yet not God-trusting. If you fear God, you ought to trust him. And I don't know about you, but I'll trust him. And I'll never doubt him. And I found out he'll surely 
bring me out. Is there anybody here that was trusted in God? I want to challenge you to go back home and just look at your blessing and say, he blessed me like this even when I was stealing from him. How much more can he bless me if I get right with him? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Know that he'll bless you. He'll bless you. He'll bless you going out. He'll bless you coming in. He'll bless you going out. He'll bless you coming in. But you've got to trust him and never doubt him. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here not afraid to trust him? You ought to learn how to trust the Lord and give him your time. You ought to learn how to trust the Lord and give him your talent. You ought to learn how to trust the Lord and give him your treasure. And when you do that, God will, he'll bless your life. God will, he'll open up doors for you. God will keep the devourer from taking your stuff. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here ever had to trust him when you could not even trace him? But when you trusted him, he did not fail you. And I thank God that there's no failure in God I thank God that there's no failing in him that's why I'm going to trust him until the day I die I'm going to trust him until the day I die is there anybody here is there anybody here is there anybody here not ashamed about it you will trust him you will give him and is there anybody here ever had the windows of heaven opened up in your life Life. when you thought uh, you were down to your last dime huh? you turned around huh? and God showed up uh, blessing your life uh, he'll show up uh, just in the nick of time huh? is there anybody here huh? is there anybody here huh? is there anybody here huh? know that he'll show up uh, can you see uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shucks now. Yeah.